Right, there we go. So, it's just the fact that, for some reason, the scheduled one was just totally broken and didn't work properly. Right, what I'm going to do, I'm going to get the link for this one very quickly, and then copy that over into wherever the last one was. Uh, if I can find the link for that again. And then hopefully get everyone that's in the other one over to this one, and then we can actually do what we're supposed to be doing here. Right, so if I go manage, and then I have a look at this one over here. Then, stream should be up now. There. Right, there we go. So if you're, ah, there we go. Right, so people can actually see things. Okay, this is good. So hopefully, people will actually click over from the other one uh, and everything will work and make sense. There we go. Yes, everyone is here. Nice. All right, so I will attempt to now, like, go back through some of the audio things. Oh, is there no audio? Surely not. I can see audio coming through. Are you sure it's, are you sure it's not just you? If other people can hear me, then, uh, then let me know. Hopefully it's just, uh, it's just you, nerd boy. Uh, yeah, hopefully that's fine. Because otherwise I'm just kind of talking to myself. Hello, hello everyone. Hello, Wicta. Hello, Luke. Benito boy. Libertarian capitalist. Damage Jeff. Ryan. Ah, everyone's here. Yeah, thank you for, for showing up and uh, and for hitting the little link and, uh, and actually managing to come over. Uh, yeah, I imagine there's probably quite a few people from either TWG or Techwear Clothing subreddit, um, everything like that. Okay, so there's, I don't know how big the delay is. There's maybe like a 20, 30 second delay on this. So everything that I say, I'll hear back from you guys. Uh, in a little bit, because I didn't, in the last one, I changed it to low latency mode, so we could do like a proper, uh, you know, like back and forth, like super fast, but I forgot to do that for the new stream, because I made this one in a panic, so it's just like normal latency mode. Uh, anyway, that's fine. <laughs> Why are you saying cock and ball torture awfuls? What has that got to do with anything? Jesus Christ. Right, um, so I did, I did have a little bit of a, of an agenda, um, some little things that I wanted to to go through. Um, so we'll probably talk about all those in due time. Um, so SB Edit says, I've been commenting on most of your videos to do an opening with Anton Bauer, which is a battery used for cinema cameras. I've never heard of an Anton Bauer before. That's going in the list. That's making the list. I'm going to write that down somewhere. Uh, hang on. Uh, what is up here? Anton Bauer. There you go. That's some knee shit right there. Cinematography battery. Uh, how much WoW Classic have I been playing? I never really uh, played World of Warcraft back in the day, so um, I feel like it would be a bit weird. I feel like I'm late to the party if I tried to do that now. Uh, so yeah. I played a little bit of Guild Wars though. That was something that I did do. Guild Wars is pretty cool. If you've never played an MMO, that's the one that I would go for. I played a little bit of... I played some old school RuneScape as well, which is kind of fun. It's not really much of a game. You just kind of like click on things and wait for numbers to go up. But uh, that's kind of fun. It's kind of chill because you can like do other stuff at the same time. Uh, yeah, so uh, Bong, how's the acronym pickup? The acronym pickup is not so hot, unfortunately, because uh, I ended up returning those, the P30s, I think they were. Um, so what I'll do, uh, let me put, hang on, if I can do this. Hey, there we go. Right, yeah, so these were the, the P30s what I bought. Um, I actually thought they were really cool. So there is going to be a video going up about these. Um, but the problem, I bought these in a medium. I did that based on my waist size. But these, because they're like super oversized, it doesn't actually matter what the waist size is. It's more about the length of them. And because I'm pretty tall, I'm like 6'1", that kind of height, um, these are actually a little bit short on me. So you can see, like with these shoes here, um, this is like with the the full length version because the PA um, uh, the P thirty A D S or P A thirty S whatever they're called um, they have these like zip off sections but this is like full length mode and even then like you can see that they're coming up a little bit short so uh, yeah they're not they're not ideal um, it's kind of a shame because I think apart from the length not being quite right they're super super nice they're really cool um, yeah 
Uh, it's just kind of a shame that... I, and I feel like if you're spending $1,000 on trousers, then you kind of want them to be perfect. And yeah, they just kind of weren't. And like the worst part is as well, it's like if these didn't zip off, they actually, like, I kind of feel like they'd be perfect that length. I don't mind them being cropped. But because they can zip off, you kind of don't want, like, a cropped length and an even more cropped length, right? It doesn't make sense. Um, so, yeah, that's that's kind of not ideal. Um, if they still had the large ones in stock, I probably would have swapped them. Um, yeah, Mikhail, I tried them with the Prestos as well, but even then there was, like, a little bit of a gap between pant and shoe. So, yeah, they, they definitely were too short, unfortunately. Um, yeah, oh well. Um, but apart from that, I think that they look pretty cool. So, as I say, there's going to be a video going up in, like, two, three weeks, something like that. That includes some stuff on that. Um, anyway, uh, hello to everyone who's just joined, who has said hi. Uh, time to sag. Um... So, how snug are the Vape Maxes on your feet, says Edward. Uh, these ones are half a size down, and they are fairly snug, um, but not too bad. They kind of stretch out a little bit over time because they're flying it. Um, but yeah, they're pretty comfy. I like them. First time I put them on, I was a bit like, oh shit, did I get the wrong size? But they're actually okay. They're fine. Um, so something that meant uh, we mentioned, someone mentioned rather, a while ago, uh, Gorilla Group Sale. And I definitely want to talk about that because that is definitely a thing. Um, so if we have a little look at Gorilla Group, um, oh, so Callum says, are you going to grab any other acronym pants? Um, I'm going to keep an eye out for, because FW19 is going to be coming out in the next, like, week or two. Um, I'm going to keep my eye out for that. If there's something that comes up that looks particularly nice, whether that be pants or a jacket or whatever, I would very much like to pick that up because I like looking at cool stuff like this and doing reviews and that sort of thing. Um... So yeah, if there's a restock on those P30s, maybe, if there's something else that's got a kind of similar fit, because the thing that I liked about those was that they were so different to everything else, like, who else is making, like, full diaper pants in dry skin? Like, no one really, I don't think, unless I'm missing something. Like, on von Levy could probably make something kind of similar, but uh, no one, no one else is really doing it, I don't think. Uh, I am taking questions, Lewis. I'm, well... I was kind of, I kind of had a bit of an agenda of like some things that I was going to talk through, but everyone just seems to be like asking questions. So I'm, I'm happy like going on this basis rather than being like, everyone shut up. We're looking at what I want to look at now. Um, I think it's, it's kind of a bit more fun if like people say things and then, and then we, we go from there basically. Uh, hey Oliver, hey Maximum Ownage, how are y'all doing? Um, sorry. Yeah. The actual question from Lewis. Um, do I own any valence aside from the frame? I don't, uh, unfortunately not. Um, I wanted to get, uh, what is it called, uh, Nemis, uh, is that what it's called? Yeah, so this was something that I really like the look of, so if I pick up any more valence, it will probably be this, or something similar, um, because I don't really own anything quite like this, and I think it looks super cool, it's like really, really clean looking, really minimal, and I can definitely see that working with like almost anything. They've got some really cool like proper jackets as well, but like this is actually way cheaper than a lot of those. I think this is like 350, yeah, 350 pounds, which is okay. It's fairly expensive for a, uh, for a bomber jacket, but it's not actually tragically bad. Um, I tried the blue one in, blue one in, blue one on in a shop. And it looked pretty sick. Like, it's a bit darker than it looks here. Um, they make it look like a really bright blue, but it's not like that. It's much nicer. So that's pretty cool. Um, what else have we got, questions-wise? Uh, oh, the Represent Clo Cargo is good. I don't know. Um, I've seen them before. Um, I've kind of had a lot of mixed reviews about Represent Clothing. I used to be in their Facebook group a while back. And it was basically just like every day it seemed like there was a new person being like, hi, Represent Clothing, I ordered some things from you. Can you please actually ship them? And then like people getting all sassy about it in the comments. So it kind of put me off the brand a little bit, to be honest. It was literally just like on, on the one side of things, it was like people that had ordered not got their stuff. And then you'd have, yeah, Represent Clothing stands on the other side who are like, don't you dare insult Represent Clothing. They are gods and you are scum. <laughs> So yeah, that, that kind of put me off, honestly. <laughs> so maybe don't join the Facebook group if you plan on buying Represent Clothing. I'm sure they've like gotten a lot better since then. That was maybe like three years ago. So that was that was a long time ago. Uh, what else have we got? 
Hey Patrickson, number one fan in the Philippines. That's that's cool. That's it's super cool actually. There's there's evidently people from like all different countries um, that are tuning in. So so thank you for for showing up from all these different places. Uh, Alfred, I am yeah, kind of six one, six two. Depends on the day. Depends if I'm wearing cute high heels or not. No, I uh, like six one, kind of the baseline. You know, if I measure myself like early in the morning, then sometimes it's 60. People like lose about an inch of height during the day, so measure yourself in the morning if you want to look a bit taller. Um, I'm there's like too many people that are asking questions. Um, where do we send outfit pics for? So I'll do outfit stuff a little bit later, so maybe at like seven ish, yeah. Um, but yeah, I'll basically just say like, oh, if you got any cool outfit pics, like just post them there and then I'll just click on links and then we can kind of look through them. Um, I feel, <laughs> I'm sorry for anyone that's like asking questions and then by the time I actually get around to them, they've like scrolled off the live chat. It's not my intention to, to miss people's stuff. Um, so name that's in Cyrillic that I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce. I don't like spamming, but which pants do you think will fit? The J1. Oh yeah, I saw you you messaged earlier actually about getting that. So for those of you that don't know, the J1 AGTV is the um, the Volt colorway of the acronym J1. So uh, if we have a look at that, there we can all rate uh, we can all rate the purchase. Is this going to come up full size? Yeah, there we go. Yeah. So uh, I mean. Errolson there is wearing the P25s, I think, um, which looks pretty cool. Um, yeah, you don't want to go too over the top, though, I guess, certainly from a color perspective. But yeah, like the, the P30s would look pretty nice, I reckon, P25s as well. Um, anything, anything really, to be honest. Like the, the J1 is a very, uh, it's kind of a bit oversized, but it's quite a neutral looking jacket, I think, in terms of the actual fit of it. So you could probably wear anything. Like P10s are the kind of slim, tapered thing. Um, that you'll see in like loads of different tech wear pants. So you go with something like that. Or yeah, you could go maximum wide boy, go for the, the P25s, P30s, something like that. Um, yeah, I think you've got a fair bit of choice, to be honest. Um, yeah, I the, the color is a little bit of a weird one, Tyson. Uh, some people are a fan, some people are not. I kind of like that acronym are willing to do stuff like this. Although, yeah, for your average person, like... You're going to want to spend £1,600 or however much they are and you have like a bright orange jacket. Most people probably not. Um, but yeah, for, for the people that that are up for that kind of thing, yeah, why not? I think it's kind of cool personally. Uh, I like the idea of having a jacket in, in some cool colours like that. Grey wouldn't be bad. Yeah, that's a good point actually, um, Skullman. Acronym never really seemed to do grey stuff. At least I don't think they do very often. It's generally uh, black and the RAF green color, that kind of olive thing. Um, uh, Dirt Hayes, yeah, I've, I'm not intentionally ignoring that question because um, you posted it a couple of times. I just like, I read half of it and then it like scrolls away. Um, yeah, backpacks are definitely something that I want to feature a little bit more because I actually don't have that many. There's the one... Um, the bag jack and spider one that I got a while ago, which is quite expensive, but I think it's pretty cool. Um, bag jack in general, pretty decent stuff. Um, what else have you got? You've got a lot of people rave about coat and seal. Uh, not seal as in like the animal seal. Uh, okay. yeah. Seal. So these guys have a bunch of different backpack options. You can see there. Um, the Nile, I think, is the most the most memed about one, basically, that's the one, yeah, it's that one there. A, freaking massive. B, it has this little hood in it, which from my understanding is almost totally functionless and a bit of a meme, because, like, it just blows off. And, and also, like, just have a hood on your jacket, you know? Do you really need it on a backpack? Probably not. But it does make you look like a turtle, so there you go. That's something. That's pretty cool. Um, yeah, in general, though, these bags are supposed to be pretty heavy, but uh, I've seen some in shops before, and they're, like, super nice looking, um, super high quality. So, yeah, that's that's definitely a thing. Um, when's the P20 review? Uh, that's going to be a couple of weeks. Uh, I mentioned that a little while ago. Um, yeah, we, we kind of went through, like, P30 fit on me, um, and it not being ideal. Um, uh, what do I think about Volback clothing? No, I don't have anything from Volback. Um, so it's it's a little bit difficult for me to talk about them, but 
they they go like so hard on their website with like marketing stuff. Uh, so let's have a look. And by that I mean the the kind of language that they use for some of this stuff. It almost makes me feel like the, the kind of Volback market is not actually someone like me. It's more someone that is interested in just like they almost like take a sort of gadget approach to their clothing. So like if we take a look, this is a like this is a t-shirt, right? This is just a t-shirt. Condition black ceramic t-shirt. Earth's toughest t-shirt made with a hundred thousand ceramic particles. Like, do you want a hundred thousand ceramic particles in your t-shirt? God damn right you do. Uh, here's, here's like several paragraphs of information telling you why you want a hundred thousand ceramic particles in your t-shirt. It's like, yeah, built with the same ceramic tech as the International Space Station. Like, it's, it's the kind of phrase that, like, it sounds really cool, and it's the kind of thing that it's like, guys, like, I hate to flex, but this t-shirt, same materials as a space station. Boom. And everyone's like, oh, very impressive, very cool. But actually, like, what is it inherently about the International Space Station that means it's a good material to also use in a t-shirt? Like, I'm sure they explain it. I mean, they evidently do explain it in this. But it's just, like, it's one of those phrases that, like, it sounds super cool, but then when you think about it, it's a bit like, oh, actually, maybe this is overkill or not actually that uh, kind of appropriate. Um, yeah, I, <laughs> the clown emojis. Yeah, it's it's true. It's true. Um, I feel like they're kind of taking techware marketing to like the nth degree with this stuff and like really going over the top with it. Because like, you know, if you go on, uh, you know, we go back to Valence, for example, like this is some of the kind of highest performance clothing that's out there kind of to an extent and like what's the description here ah lightweight wind and water resistant bomber jacket with integrated elastic at the collar cuffs and hem like it just tells you what it does and that it's going to be pretty decent and i'm sure if you you know if you look into it uh it does actually say the specific materials yeah so it will give you like a material breakdown so you know what it's made from tells you what you can do with it but that's pretty much it. Like the clothing speaks for itself. But then you go over to this and it's almost like the opposite. Like the, the clothing is like secondary. There's like these little pictures of the clothing itself. But the primary thing is like all this text about like how it's going to, you know, like protect your skin if you come off your bike or something. It's like, it's crazy. Um, but yeah, it does have a cool texture to its credit. Um, it like I'm I'm not I'm not trying to like clown these guys too much. I realize I'm like going super hard on like kind of implying that these guys are total trash. Like I'm sure the clothing is actually good, but I have no personal experience with it. And yeah, they just go super hard on like how great it is. Um, and I kind of feel like maybe they should let some of the clothing speak for itself a bit more. Well, that's just my opinion, as I say. Um, I'm sure the stuff is decent. I've not heard of anyone being like, I bought Volback stuff and it was a total scam or anything like that. So, yeah, take that with a pinch of salt. <laughs> no, you're right. You're right. We do need t-shirts to protect us from orbital debris. I mean, if that asteroid shit comes down at like a thousand miles an hour, good luck. Good luck in a merino t-shirt or whatever this is. Uh, some kind of mesh. Good luck in a mesh. You're going to die in this. Anyone that's bought Volback, though, they're going to be out there starting a new society. Um, what else we got? Patrickson, what's your favourite Y3 shoes? My favourite of all time are the ones that are uh, one in from the... Hang on, can I point at them? This is surprisingly difficult to do. No, that way. Yeah, those ones that are there that you can barely see. Um, they are the Y3 Retro Boots. These are like my favourite Y3 shoes. The all black ones, these ones here. Is this going to take me to a product page? Yes, it is. Show me the big ones. There you go. Yeah, like I just think that these ones totally nail it in terms of boost, nice and comfy, neoprene, uh, upper, again, nice and comfy. They're not, they're like obviously super futuristic. They look kind of cool, but they don't go way over the top like a lot of Y3 shoes can do. They're quite wearable you know i i am pretty confident and happy wearing these in a variety of situations um yeah i just think they look nice and they're the first y3 shoes i ever bought and it's all been downhill from there basically um, so yeah it's a shame that they don't make those anymore um and like like these went down to 95 pounds like are you kidding me i should have doubled up on these things because the boost now is yellow and it looks like trash it's awful 
Uh, it's so bad. Um, yeah, but that's that's my favorite. I quite like the Kaiwas, which I bought last year. Um, the Cassas, I think, are kind of overrated, and this is coming from someone that has a pair sitting back there. Um, I just I just find that like yeah, I just really struggle to find a good outfit with those. They just look very like over the top. Um, what's the next step up from Uniqlo Block Tech in price and materials? Uh, that is a good question. I don't really know. I feel like Uniqlo is a bit of an outlier in terms of like price to how good it actually is because that stuff is dirt cheap, but it's actually pretty decent. So there's quite a lot of stuff where like you go up to the next tier and like the quality might actually not be as good. So a lot of the kind of budget or affordable tech wear brands, they've got a bit of a cooler look to them. They're a bit more edgy, a bit more cyberpunk or whatever. But then the actual construction, probably better with Uniqlo than with a lot of those brands. I guess the step up to that is the kind of like mainstream outdoor brands so like the North Face, Patagonia or whatever, they will have a couple of models that will look pretty decent and can fit into TechWare stuff pretty nicely. Um, I know that they do absolutely love jamming their logo on everything so it's kind of easy to look like a bit of a normie or whatever um, because you know everyone in the world has a North Face jacket. Uh, but there is a reason for that, like it is decent stuff. So that's probably the next tier up really. North Face have a couple of, they have the kind of, uh, what do they call it, like black series, something like that, which are a little bit cooler. They've got a few cool collabs as well. Um, and something like Arter Arcteryx as well. Um, not necessarily Valence, but just mainline stuff, because there's a couple of decent mainline Arcteryx things that are, yeah, pretty good. Um, and they're much less expensive than Valence. Um, so, you know, you could get, uh, what is the one that I've got? I can't remember. It's like literally back there and I can't remember what it's called. My mind has gone blank. Anyway, that was, I think, maybe £150, something like that. And it's really, really nice. So, um, yeah, Arcteryx is, is definitely one to go for around that kind of price point. Um, yeah, true on that, Austin. Um, triple black version of the Retro Boost would be sick. Um, yeah, definitely, definitely up for that. Um, someone get on the phone to Yoji, call him up. I've got him on speed dial. No, I don't really. I don't. Um, uh, what do I think of NXDVS? And then Jordan said <laughs> NXDVS is pure meme. Uh, yeah, I, I would kind of, yeah, I would semi agree with that. So NXDVS, let's have a look at what he's got in stock at the moment. So, yeah, NXDVS is one of those, like, it's kind of tactical cosplay kind of brand. So, like, pretty much everything that they've got is not really super functional, with the potential exception of accessories, I guess, uh, like bags and stuff. But you can see, like, they've got a lot of, that's the kind of ACG thing, actually. But, like, a lot of their things are kind of quite edgy, like, graphic-focused things. Can I make this bigger? Yeah, there we go. Ooh. Yeah, so um, very like graphical detail focused, very kind of black heavy stuff. It's a bit like, it's more kind of, yeah, cyber goth military stuff than it is like proper tech wear, I would say. Because like for these guys, the focus is definitely not on like technical fabrics and performance, that sort of thing. So, you know, it's like, what's this? It's like 100% cotton ripstop fabric. It's like, okay, fine. It's probably just some like normal stuff. Yeah, so... I'm uh, actually quite familiar with this uh, kind of fabric um, for reasons that I won't get into just yet, but that's that's one for the future. But anyway, it's it's a decent but fairly basic material, and coming in at 110 euros is actually quite a lot for that material. Um, but yeah, it's it's kind of to be fair, this is actually one of the better looking products. Um, but yeah, quite a lot of it, I think, for me, just kind of strays too far into the. Um, like very edgy tactical kind of stuff. So if you look on uh, the Instagram, for example, uh, MXDVS, that's my uh, that's my Instagram, by the way. Subscribe to this, Antoine. Thank you very much. 10.1K, we made it. 10K, boys. So yeah, like if you look at the kind of fits that MXDVS are putting out, like don't get me wrong, from an aesthetic perspective, there is definitely a very clear direction, a very strong direction. 
Um, yeah, cyber goth, like that's that's definitely the right kind of thing. But you can see, like, if I can zoom into this a little bit more, like this is obviously way over the top from a kind of genuine performance perspective. Like, no one actually needs to carry all this stuff on them. Um, so yeah, take that as you will. And I'm sure there's ways of integrating stuff like this in a more tasteful way. You know, like if you take one of these elements, like if you just took that little knee bag, for example, you put that as part of a tech outfit, then like, that's fine. That's cool. You know, you got a bit of graphical detail, a bit of like interesting leg stuff going on. You know, why not? Um, but yeah, they kind of, they push it to like the nth degree. I think the the alternative to MXDVS would be uh, Alpha Motif. They kind of do a similar thing to MXDVS, but I don't think they go as kind of costumey with it. Um, and I've got a few bits from these guys that I actually quite like. So, I mean, you can see like, again, it's very like graphical heavy. It's very aesthetic driven stuff. Um, they've got these like, yeah, it's it's not dissimilar. My understanding as well is that there's some kind of like beef between the two, which I have no real interest in getting involved in. But um, yeah, apparently, you know, I, I imagine like one of them accused the other of like stealing their designs. But it's probably the, the case that like they've both been inspired from the same place. Uh, like it's very clear that both of them are taking some military inspiration from this stuff. But anyway, yeah, like MXTVS, they've got some cool accessories like belts and stuff. In fact... Uh, that is the bottom half of a little like key dangly thing that's currently uh, attached to my belt, which is a little magnet thing, which is super cool. So yeah, that's a thing. Um, that is definitely a way of like integrating this kind of tactical stuff. Oh yeah, that's the key belt. In fact, that's this thing here. Yeah, so that's it's definitely like a cool way of integrating this kind of thing with more technical stuff without going too over the top. Um, I'm sorry for everyone. <laughs> everyone's uh, questions that I've missed. Tyson, it's trash. Um, is Antoine making his own tech wear? Uh, unconfirmed. I neither confirm nor deny these rumors. Everyone, <laughs> everyone picked up on that. Um, <laughs> Fred went on a date with a, a tech wear wearing. MXDVS girl who turned out to believe numbers came from aliens. Okay. I mean, we're going to find out. When are we storming Area 51? It's like the 21st of September or something. So maybe she's right. You never know. Um, I'm, I'm going to reserve all judgment until then. Um, Star Wars gameplay. What's your opinion on the Aoku drop? Yes, that was, that was on my agenda. I've so far got through approximately zero points to the agenda. So... Um, uh, is it Aoku? I think it was aokuware.com, something like that. Yeah. So this stuff came out today, and uh, when I was preparing for this stream this morning, everything was still in stock apart from this bag, and now like these two things have also gone out of stock. Um, my understanding is that these are like variations on existing AUQ products or things that they've made before, but they've basically incorporated this different face fabric, so I think it's called a nylon taffeta, something like that. So it's got a shinier look to it. Um, and it's a little bit of a different feeling. But yeah, I had a look through all this stuff this morning and it looks super cool, to be honest. Um, I really like the, you know, they've got some subtle graphical elements in there. There's clearly a lot from like a functionality perspective. I mean, you can see from these pictures, like, okay, he's jammed it full of loads of different things, but like, there's clearly a lot that you can do. Like this bag is doing a lot of work for its uh, 420 euros, which is, I'm sure they did that intentionally pricing it at 420. Uh, but yeah, you can fit a little laptop in there. Uh, and if you check the video as well, I know they've got, I'm going to mute that, it's going to be super loud. Um, they've got pic, uh, like a little clip of it being worn, I think, like over here. Um, but yeah, I think it looks really nice. Um, it's kind of a shame that they're made in such low quantities that they sell out so quickly. Because uh, that one was like, that one wasn't that expensive, I don't think. That was like sub 200 euros easily. Um, and that, again, like still got quite a lot of functionality and looks pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, they're ones to keep an eye out for, for sure. Uh, it's just a shame, yeah, as I say, the only thing that's left is this one, which is a little bit of a weird shape. I think it's like a military bandolier kind of thing. Um, which, yeah, is definitely not going to be to everyone's taste, and that's definitely not a kind of go out every day wearing it kind of thing. Um, but yeah, still cool. Um, and as I said, like, a couple of weeks ago in that video that I included these guys in, they're definitely one to, like, keep an eye on the social channels and that kind of thing, so that you know. They have a blog as well, actually, I think. Uh, yeah, if you go, like, logbook, you, like, keep an eye on this thing. 
then they'll you know they'll update like before stuff comes out because yeah it's the kind of stuff where you have to know what you want beforehand and then just come straight in um only sigma says do you know some north face techwear jackets uh so the one that i have is the 1990 mountain parker i think or Mount, uh, mountain jacket gtx that's the one i mean to be honest i wouldn't get too hung up about like whether an individual piece of clothing is or is not techwear it's more about like an overall outfit like is this performance based does this kind of have a futuristic element to it does it look uh yeah have some kind of element of like urban functionality or aesthetics that kind of thing so i like there are plenty of things you know like this in itself if this is going to load up a decent screenshot of it uh no maybe not maybe this one is this gonna work yeah there we go so like this in itself does this look like a techwear item of clothing techwear in inverted commas uh well i mean like it's got buttons that's a very like traditional way of doing something up like that um you know it's got these high pockets and stuff like okay yeah maybe but it's not a really a very futuristic looking piece of clothing you know it's got the north face logo on it like this is very much more outdoor gear than it is techwear in my opinion um, but, you know, if you go, oh, there you go, like, that's, this is the version that I have. Um, yeah, like, is this traditionally tech, well, holy shit, that went down to $185, are you kidding me? Is this still in stock? Damn. Right, I'm going to post, well, I'm not going to post a link to that, but you can, you can see this place is, uh, rough clothing, but yeah, down to $185, like, for that price, I would say that this is actually a really good jacket, so that's just an aside, but, um, anyway, does it look like a techwear item of clothing in itself? Probably not, really, to be honest. Um, it's definitely more outdoor gear, but then, uh, you know, like in context, you know, exhibit A, uh, last time I wore this jacket in an outfit, like snow things, whatever, wear that along with uh, the Nike commuters, which are kind of similar color, got the Garuda stuff as well, like face mask, Orbit gear bag, Arc'teryx gloves, like together, that makes something that, you know, you might associate that with tagwear, right? Like that's the right kind of look. Um, so yeah, don't get too hung up, basically, about like, oh, is this techwear, is this not techwear, I don't really know. Like, if it suits you, if you think it looks cool, if you think you can integrate it into like an, like other techwear -y wardrobe things, then just go for it and like, and, and get involved, basically. Um, but yeah, as Skullman says, it is, it is Gore-Tex uh, construction. So uh, on that basis, it is a very high performance garment. So uh, that's, um, that's got that going for it. Um, Benjamin says it looks like shit. Wow, savage. <laughs> I assume you said that before I said that I owned it. Um, anyway, uh, William says, where can I get that closet organizer? Yeah, so that thing, hang on. Uh, this thing behind me here, uh, that is from Ikea. So it's nothing particularly fancy. It's one of those ones where you can go on their website and you can uh, kind of like configure it yourself and then they just send you all the bits and then you just build it basically so you can you can make exactly i need to like this is surprisingly hard to do you can make it look exactly like that if you want you can make it look totally different you can just fill the whole i don't know you can put like 10 clothes rails on it if you want you're not going to fit anything in there but you can do it um yeah they will let you do literally anything go crazy with it you can even you can make it like five times longer than this as well like the the possibilities are endless uh, I can't show the P30s because I sent them back to Acronym like two days ago. Um, but if you, once this stream is over, if you like go back through the screen, um, screen, through the stream, then you'll be able to see, uh, I posted a couple of like pictures of it basically to see how they look. Um, right. I feel like I've missed loads of things that people are asking about. Uh... Oh yeah, Fred says about the Nike woven Parker. I think I remember seeing that, and uh, and it was it was pretty cool. Yeah, there's there's loads of mainline Nike stuff, which is really nice. Um, what else have we got between baggy and slim pants? What you prefer, says Chris. Um, that's a difficult question, honestly. I think for for me, because I am fairly tall, I am fairly slim. Uh, a slimmer pant tends to look more flattering on me. So, yeah, from that perspective, purely, uh, yeah, I think slim pants are probably better. But it's kind of cool to wear some wider stuff every now and again. Um, yeah, just just mix it up, basically. I think it depends as well on what the rest of your wardrobe looks like, 
your own kind of height, weight, body shape, all that kind of thing as to what sorts of shapes are going to work better for you. So it's hard to say uh, objectively what is best. Yeah, I'm glad uh, glad you've caught on to my very masculine drinking glass here. Pretty tech, right? Technical water holster. Um, so what have we got? Patrickson. Yeah, a couple of people have... Or maybe you've just asked a couple of times. Um, why three 4D runners? I'm not that sold on 4D technology, honestly. Um, so if we have a look. Uh, so, yeah, 4D stuff. Let's talk about 4D stuff in general. So, don't get me wrong. I think these look cool as fuck. I think they're sick. I really like the color of these. I love that little, like... Uh, Whatever you, what, what do you call that? Like some kind of honeycomb stuff? Yeah, honeycomb-y type thing. I think it looks sick. But can you imagine wearing that in any real scenario? Like enjoy getting mud or dirt or anything stuck in there because that ain't never coming out. Like I have enough problems with normal soles. Um, but with that, like what if you get chewing gum or something stuck in there? Like that's absolute game over. And then, uh, you know, you've spent whatever, 200 quid on your nice Alpha Edge 4Ds, which are like the cheapest 4Ds you can get, probably, because um, there's the Y3 ones as well. I remember when they came out, they were like crazy money. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I actually tried to buy these, I think, but they were very limited quantities. Um, so maybe I'm just salty about it. Uh, but yeah, like 1,700 pounds. You spend 1,700 pounds on your crepes, and then you accidentally tread in chewing gum, and uh, and then that's it. You've got to spend like four hours trying to get them out of there. And also, like, for some people, that could, I could definitely see that, like, triggering people. You know, there's that, like, fear of, uh, of like, holes and stuff. I can't remember what it's called, but it's, it's like, a thing. And, yeah, that would definitely set people off, for sure. <laughs> How are you doing, Magnus? You outed me for drinking Gamer Girl P. The finest. Um, yeah, now, you, now you're not making fashion content anymore, you, you're getting your fix on other channels. Um, although, I have to say, actually, a uh, very brave manoeuvre and very cool as well. Um, I definitely sympathise with a lot of the things that you were saying, Magnus, in that video about, like, you know, when things become a job, they stop becoming a hobby and, you know, feeling like you have to make a certain kind of content. Um, that's definitely, like, a trap that people can fall into with, with fashion YouTube, especially. Um, and you can tell as well, like, you see some people on YouTube, like, fashion YouTube. I'm going to go on a run now about fashion YouTube. But you get people, and they'll be like, every single week, they'll be like, I bought, like, £10,000 of, like, dumb fashion stuff. And then, like, the video, you can tell that they're just like, why am I spending my money on this stuff? Like, I think I fucked up. But, you know, like, they're buying all these things, like, to try and flex all these garms and, like... Yeah, like buying these mystery boxes of clothes that they don't even want just so that they can do a review on them. And like, don't get me wrong, I fall for that a little bit sometimes as well. Like, I've definitely bought things in the past where I've been like, yeah, I'm not 100% on this product, but I feel like people will really like it if I do a review on it. So I buy it on that basis, and then I end up not actually wearing it that much. And it's like, I kind of played myself there. And then you're also, because you're not being true to yourself, you're kind of like doing things based on what you think people want to watch you end up not being as passionate in the videos. And yeah, it's it's just not ideal. So I, I try and consciously like, do I actually like this thing? Do I actually want to make a video about this? And uh, and then kind of go on that basis. So the, uh, like the video that I did last week, the one about the t-shirts, like comparing two kinds, that's almost one of those things where like, you could very easily go into that like hype beast territory. You know, you compare like, Primark versus Balenciaga or whatever and you like you try and make it all about like the logos and the branding and, and stuff like that um, But yeah, like instead I wanted to keep it to something that I thought would genuinely be useful and something that I was Interested in and passionate about to an extent in the form of that Arc'teryx frame t-shirt um, and I think that kind of came across and um, from, from the looks of things, like it seems like people really enjoyed that video. So the, the metric that I like to use most is like the, the kind of like to dislike ratio. Because don't get like, I have no problem with people disliking my videos. That's absolutely not a thing. Because um, to be honest, like any engagement, please. 
I will take literally anything. Just please, please engage. No, um, so, but yeah, like I try and go on that metric because if you've got like, if literally everyone likes a video that, that you put out, even if not that many people watch it, then that kind of suggests that like that was valuable content and people wanted to see it. Even if not that many people clicked on it, when they did, they were like, oh, okay, this, I got what I wanted from this video. Whereas if you get another bit of content where it gets like loads and loads of views, everyone watches it, but then it's got like a really bad dislike ratio, then that kind of suggests that like people clicked on that expecting some kind of content and then you don't really do a very good job of providing it. So yeah, that's, that's the ratio that I try and go on. Um, and yeah, that Arcteric one did really well. So um, I'm glad you guys enjoyed that one, basically. When am I going to do a Tech Guy Mystery Box? Hopefully never. If I do a Tech Guy Mystery Box, please euthanize me. Unless I do it ironically, but even then. Um, but mercifully, I don't think anyone really does Tech Guy Mystery Boxes. I don't think. Uh, yeah, hopefully no one ever does that. Um, the closest thing is Outlier do... They kind of do like a loot box type concept. So you pay, I think it's something like $70. They do it at the end of the season. And um, yeah, you, you basically pay $70 but, and you give them your size, but you don't know what you're going to get. So they might send you a t-shirt. They might send you a pair of trousers. I think they can even send you like a jacket or accessories or something like that. So that's quite a cool thing, I think, because then you know the brand that you're getting from. And like outlier stuff is always decent, to be honest. And you know it's going to fit you because you give them your size. Um, but you might end up getting something that maybe you wouldn't ordinarily buy, but you get it at a bit of a discount. Um, so that's that's kind of something that I approve of more. And I think it's a cool way of doing a sale rather than just like discounting your products. Because the, the, the trap that you can easily fall into, the danger with that, is as soon as you start discounting stuff and you do things, you know, 50% off or whatever... Uh, it's it's the Y3 problem, basically. You you start discounting things, and then everyone's just like, oh, don't buy this product full price. Just wait for the sales, because it always goes on sale. And then you can't not discount it, because no one will buy it at full price, because everyone expects to sell, so you just have to do it. So, yeah, you, you, can't, you can't win if you start doing that, basically. Um, uh what else have we got the, yeah <laughs> i'm glad you guys are so enthusiastic but yeah um you're asking more questions than i can answer it's probably because i get a bit carried away to be honest um anytime anytime anyone asks something uh do you like the concept of bloodhound form apex oh bloodhound from apex um yeah i guess i think mirage is the coolest though like that's mirage is the most tech hero uh, with the, what are they called? The decoys, just saying. That's the most tech. Or Watson, with the big thing on, on the back. That's fine. <laughs> Someone disliked the video as soon as I said I was okay with people disliking. Um, yeah, thanks for disliking it, I guess. But at least you're being honest. At least you're being honest, that's fine. Um, did I keep the acronym Downtown Air Force Ones? I did. They are um, that box. Actually, I can now I'm not looking at this. Um, yeah, the big box that's down there. The box is insane. It is absolutely huge. Um, but yeah, that's that's what they are. I did keep them. I ended up changing the laces to black. So they're the crimson ones, but they've only got red on the back now, and the the top of them is just black. Um, and yeah, it, it looks looks pretty good to be honest. Um, I don't have that many pants though that fit that well with them. The ACG woven pants I think are the best ones because they're like a little bit wider. But even then, like I feel like they really need something that's super wide. So to be honest, those P30s, those would have been ideal. Um, but yeah, I, I took them back. Um, took them back? Yeah, yeah, I returned the P30s. I did not know that JME wore Tegwear stuff. That's news to me, but that's pretty cool. Um, I guess probably a lot of the like UK grime artists and that kind of thing, they will have like a little bit of military inspiration or like that kind of tactical streetwear type stuff. So a lot of them will wear like chest harnesses or holsters or things like that, but in like a more normal streetwear outfit. And they'll wear like cargo pants and stuff as well. But yeah, often they don't kind of go full techwear. But yeah, it's it's still cool, I think, that techwear is being incorporated a little bit more into streetwear stuff. Uh, is Bape Techwear? Um, not really. I don't think most of it is. I mean, like, being able to zip yourself into a hoodie, definitely Techwear right there. Like, vision, highly overrated. Just walk around. You don't need to see anything. Stumbling around in the dark, technical functionality right there. 
Oh, that's cool, though. I did not know that JME had an Alpine jacket. That is sick. Uh, NW, do you think Y3 is dying? I really like it, though. Um, no, I don't think Y3 is dying. I honestly think... I think a lot of people think that Y3 is overrated, and therefore that means it's underrated, I think. Um, yeah, a lot of people, I think, are very quick to discount Y3 clothing on the basis that, like, the quality is not amazing. But personally, I've never had any quality-based issues. It's not like, you know, you're going to buy things from Y3 and then they fall apart. I think the problem that people have is that it's not massively different to mainline Adidas. Like, if you get a nice Adidas piece and then compare that to Y3, the actual construction is not necessarily that different. Is that a problem, though? I don't think so, because it's the, like, you're paying for the design with Y3. You're not paying for this, like, beautifully constructed garment. It's still mass market stuff, but it looks significantly different to a lot of the other sportswear things on the market. So I think Y3 is really cool. I think a lot of things, though, um, a lot of the things that they do, especially in the last couple of seasons, they've used quite a lot of branding, so they've, they've got loads of products that are, like, just a t-shirt that's got like a Y3 written on it, really big or whatever. You've got like the Yoji Yamamoto signature, that kind of thing. But there are interesting things in there. You know, you've got the sailcloth poncho, the one that's behind me, behind the head. That one, no. Other hand, that one there. Yeah. Um, yeah, like that is super interesting. It's really cool. It's super unique and different. No one else has, to my knowledge, really done something like that. So Y3, yeah, absolutely has some cool stuff. Um, so yeah. Uh, well, I just say about the sale because it is true that often Y3 stuff will go on discount at the end of the season. So if you like Y3, end of season sale, definitely a thing to go for. Um, yeah, Johnny, as as I say, yeah, uh, branding is often a little bit too over the top with Y3. But they do, they do have some good stuff, for sure. Um, yeah, you're right, Austin. There is an MMA fighter who wears acronym. Uh, I can't remember who that is, though. I've seen, like, enough pictures of him, and I've totally forgotten it. Uh, I don't know about any British actor, though. There's Yeah, there's a couple of cool examples of people wearing acronym and stuff out there. Um, it's one of those things, I guess, because of the cost. Like, if you're a celebrity, you've got unlimited money. Why not? Um, did your white jacket lose its colour? Mm, what one? Oh, the... Which one? There's the, the ACG one and the North Face one. So that one, that was never white. That's like a, it's kind of like an old English white. It's like a cream color. The ACG one though, that is still nice and white. That's still really good. With each jacket, because obviously I have quite a few, I don't wear each one that much because, you know, you just rotate around them. So the, the white one is still almost as nice as when I initially bought it, um, which is good. So yeah, everything's, yeah, Max Holloway. That's the one. Yeah. Thank you, Ian. Do I ever go for a mall, get to go to a mall to try and look for affordable tech right Uh Not really, to be honest. Um, I, it's one of those things where, like, you can... I'm sure you can go into, like, a fast fashion outlet and you will find things that can work in context of tech wear. Um, but I think it, it, it's a bit of a jumble sale. I think it's going to be quite difficult to find that. So if, if you don't mind doing that, if you don't mind, like, having a wander uh through places and possibly not finding anything um then by all means go for it because yeah i i do think that there are fast fashion brands who will do the odd technical thing um but yeah it's hard basically um one thing that i wanted to talk about actually was i think i mentioned it and then got sidetracked yeah so gorilla group gorilla group gorilla group um this was like i wanted to talk about like a few techwear news things um, so one of them is uh, there is a sale on Gorilla Group stuff currently, end of season sale. They've got 20% off basically everything. And I know I know this sounds like an advert now that I'm doing. This is literally not. I've had no communication with them. This is just because there's like, I think there's like another four days or something. I think it ends on like the 13th. Um, I think someone posted the discount code earlier. Um, so if anyone remembers that, then by all means paste it in there. If not, I will find it. But yeah, there's a discount code. You can take like 20% off everything. And I noticed, because I was having a look through this this morning and I was, I was checking some of the stuff. So if you go back far enough to the Tilker stuff, like some of the earlier stuff, the discount stacks, the discount stacks with the older stuff. So you've got like this jacket here, $500, quite a lot for a lot of jackets, to be honest. 
Um, but I thought that this jacket looked super cool and I remember talking about it in the Tilkhurst video and I did that like a year ago or whenever. Um, and yeah, I, I think it's pretty nice. So already 20% off, $400, and then you take another 20% off that, which makes it, what, $320? $320 for that? Like, that's kind of almost half price, which is actually pretty decent. So yeah, I would say um, if you are a fan of Gorilla Group, if you've liked some of their stuff before, but you feel like maybe it's a little bit too expensive, because I do get that, like, Gorilla Group products are fairly expensive in general, um, then 20% is pretty much the most that you're ever going to get. <laughs> yeah. Make sure, make sure you cop the apron. Do some technical grilling. We out here. Get the spatula in there. Get every grill-based attachment. SpongeBob SquarePants in the house. Hell yeah. Mechanic swag. Um, ah, yeah, Skullman, yeah. GG 2019 SS. I'm going to post that myself as well. Discount code. There, there you go. So then, because I've posted it, it will be more visible because it comes up in yellow. Uh, so yeah, that's that's the one to go for. So my recommendations, uh, if you are looking for anything like that, I reviewed those ones, the PLO2s, a couple of months ago. Yeah, two months ago, maybe. Um, I quite like those. I would check out the video of that if that's something you might be interested in. I don't think they're for everyone because they are like quite hard, quite heavy duty feeling. Um, so you might not find them like as comfortable as some other things. I think the translucent, the apparition leather bags, I think these are sick. I think they're super cool, but they are just incredibly expensive. So even with 20% off, um, that's what, what's 20% off? Uh, 36, 72, 280 dollars ish. That brings that down to you. So still pretty expensive for what is a small bag, but you'll get a sick material. Absolutely sick. Um, that like no one else will have. And you can definitely, you can flex all your cool shit that's inside the bag. Look, you can keep your like roll of dollar bills in there or whatever. Uh, and then, yeah, you can, you can just show off to people basically. Hol yes, uh, Ian, holster bag. That is a big one. That is a big suggestion from me from you but i'm stealing your suggestion and making it my own yeah so that came out with tilco so that's a while back here yeah this green one i think is super cool and again 20 percent off already you take another 20 percent off that makes it down to what 128 dollars ish something like that um quick maths two plus two is four minus one that's three yeah i think that this looks really cool um and i like the fidlock buckle that they've got on there i like the little double thing that they've got yeah it's nice um, I probably wouldn't buy it though because I literally just got that Saintsis one, which I also like a lot. Um, so yeah, possibly not for me, although yeah, the colour is really nice. Uh, it's got a little bit of branding on there, which is cool, that's fine with me. The other thing that I was thinking of, weirdly, is the they've got a couple of rings, uh, like leather rings. And I'm not, as you can see, I'm not a jewellery wearing man, I don't even wear a watch anymore. But yeah, they have these, which are kind of interesting, because... These are made of leather, they're not metal. So I think from a comfort perspective, they'll actually be pretty nice. So, yeah. Uh, where can I submit my outfit for the outfit rating part? Um, yeah, that is a good point. I probably, I feel like we've spent a long time doing the like discussion aspect. So I think probably what I'll do is I will do that for like another stream and focus on it specifically. Because I feel like <laughs> when I started the stream, I was a bit like, I don't know if anyone is actually going to show up to this stuff. Um, so I might just be like talking to myself for an hour. So I kind of filled out quite a big agenda on that basis. But um, fortunately, you guys are, are super active in the chat, which I'm very grateful for. So we've got loads to talk about. So I think it's going to be better if I save that and do it either as a specific live stream where we just focus on like looking through different outfits and kind of things that we think works or doesn't work. We can do a bit of a like group feedback sesh, which might look quite cool. Or we can do that as a uh, YouTube video. Um, so I can, you know, maybe at the end of a video, I'll say like, oh, by the way, future video is going to be about outfit ratings. So submit your outfits here and then I'll look through them and we can do it that way. Whatever you guys would prefer, basically. Um, so if you like this live format, then let me know. And, uh, and yeah, we can do it that way. If not, yeah, we can summarize. Maybe I'll do like top five viewer tech wear outfits, that kind of thing. And I know it's that kind of format that like everyone has done a bunch of times. It's, it's moving into the like mystery box technology um, area of like, yeah, just being like generic YouTuber. But 
um, I think it would be fun, and I feel like maybe you guys would enjoy it as well. So, yeah. Um, Elia, yeah. A uh, good holster example was that one, and the, the Saintsis one as well, the one that I looked at a couple of weeks ago. Uh, both of those are good options. Um, there are one or two others out there. I can't really think what they are at the moment, though. But yeah, both of those. Both of those are good. Uh, Davest, Divest. Um, what do I think about the Ultimate City Jacket? So I can't really give my full opinion on this because they sent me like a very early sample and my understanding is that the final product is very, very different to the one that I got. So the one that I have is like a really thin material. Actually, I think I sold it. I can't remember if I still have it or not. Anyway, um, it's like a really thin material. It's like almost papery, but the final product was a lot more substantial. So my understanding is that the final product was actually a lot better than the one that I got. So my one, I felt it was cool because it had a lot of different like weird functionality bits. It had like some cool party trick things, but I think the final jacket is actually supposed to be like fairly decent as well. Um, but but yeah, when it does show up, uh, let me know what you think of it because yeah, as I say, I don't actually have the final one. <laughs> Thoughts on you, Nike ACG, lol, it's trash, right? Uh, I mean, I don't want to say it's trash. I think they've got one or two decent pieces in there. They've got the... There's a pair of pants that I think are quite nice. Um, but, yeah, a lot of it is very... Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just kind of retro Nike stuff. It's it's nothing like what Nike Lab was. So it's a little bit of a shame, to be honest. Because um, I, I was hoping for good things. And I've set out my shortcut to do something weird. Uh, so, yeah, if we have a look at, like, the current the current things. So we've got HEG shoes, like, I'm not a massive fan of these, but fine, okay. These things, I mean, this is just really wacky. And like, these cow print overalls, like, are you kidding me? This this stuff is just bizarre. I guess not cow print, it's camo, but nonetheless, like, this stuff is, is just pretty ridiculous. Like, I can't see this being too wearable, honestly. And there's, there's quite a few things that are like that. And it's kind of a shame, because I feel like they're almost nailing it and getting this like really cool like retro futury kind of like fun 90s stuff but a lot of it is just not quite hitting the mark for me like this i think the idea of like a zip up short sleeve shirt cool i like that i think that's cool but i think the color choices here like the blue and red combo and like the danger orange and black it's just a little bit too much but like imagine if they had this in like you know gray and black or something i know like everything everything has to be black if I'm wearing it but you know like you just don't have to go quite so hard on on making these insane colors and don't get me wrong like I like jazzy colors and stuff like that but blue and red for me is just not the one it's not the one uh Tabon I'm glad you like the live format though um that's cool I'm glad of that uh, uh the comments have just like jumped randomly so I don't know where I was at um, but yeah, in short, like, I think there are some decent things. Like, I've heard some okay-ish things about these woven cargo pants. They seem quite expensive for what they're actually offering, but I quite like these ones, and it seems like these are possibly the best Nike ACG cargo pants that are out there, um, better than the last couple of seasons. And you can actually spray them with DWR if you want to give them some water resistance, because out of the box, these aren't, I don't think. Um, and that's something that, I think it was Austin... Austin said, thoughts about spraying everything with DWR. Um, but yeah, you, you can do that. There's certainly nothing wrong with doing that. <laughs> yeah, uh, you're right, Cleaver Slips. There's there's some B&Q uniform swag going on with that stuff. Like, yeah, for a lot of you guys, you probably don't know what B&Q is. It's like a hardware shop in the UK, basically. And yeah, like, I think it's like red and black are their colours or whatever. But yeah, that is absolutely something that someone from B&Q would wear. Can hear the cam refocusing in the background. Oh, sorry about that, Sasha. Um, yeah, that's that's a good point actually. I was supposed to be using uh, this. What I wanted to use was this nice, actual, decent camera that I purchased specifically to do content with. Um, and I I stuck this on the tripod like all ready to stream, and then I opened it up and I was like, oh, this doesn't have an HDMI output, it's a micro HDMI. And I don't have a micro HDMI cable because who in the world owns a micro HDMI cable? So I couldn't use that, so instead I'm using a Logitech webcam, which was like 30 quid. But it's actually surprisingly good, so um, I'm impressed with, with that. But yeah, uh, next time I live stream, it will be with like the same quality that you'll find in the YouTube videos. So yeah.
Uh, my thoughts on Gorilla Group cargos. I think they are pretty cool. I like the ones that I've got a lot, and I think they've got some really nice um, shapes and styles and that kind of thing, basically. So, yeah, I am all in favor of Gorilla Group cargos. They're quite expensive, um, but, yeah, I think they're pretty decent. Uh, PQ is lit. <laughs> yeah, the splatter stuff was cool, but the price was awful. Yeah, so, I mean... It, it was not that popular, this stuff. This was the last Nike Lab ACG collection, um, which I think is, what, like a year old now? Yeah, a whole year. RIP, RIP Nike Lab ACG. But yeah, you can still buy this in all sizes and it's massively discounted as well. So I think that's testament to this stuff not being as popular as it used to be. Like the Nike Lab, um, the Alpine jacket, when that came out, that was gone in like a matter of hours. That was out you know you can buy it this half price and a year later and it's still in stock so yeah it's kind of a shame to be honest because uh, yeah it, it's just a shame like nike lab acg i feel kind of started going a bit up and down and then it just ended um but there are rumors of there being a, a nike and acronym collab product or or collection that's going to come out so uh yeah Keep an eye out for that, because if that comes out, that's going to be super cool. Yeah, like clothing, not just shoes. <clears throat> Microdose. What do I think of wearing non-technical shoes with a full Gore-Tex or dry skin fit? Um, so I think, I've kind of mentioned this somewhere before, but I think a lot of people get very hung up on the idea of like performance footwear having to be waterproof or water resistant or whatever like performance in footwear for me is more comfort based than anything else um that's kind of the thing that i would focus on because if you're trying to buy like waterproof footwear then you know it's not going to be that comfortable and for a lot of wearing situations it's not actually going to be that appropriate so if it's not raining then your feet will actually get quite kind of hot and sweaty you'll notice that with the commuters um, which are water resistant and your feet can get quite hot in those quite easily um, So yeah, like don't worry about wearing like Gore-Tex or dry skin clothing and then uh, I lost my train of thought. Yeah, and then wearing like normal shoes I think if they fit aesthetically and they're performance um, not performance oriented if they're you know, they're comfortable They fit nicely with the rest of the outfit then by all means go for it. I'm gonna take your suggestion Jeff Stay hydrated, hydro homies. We're out here. We're out here refilling the water. I definitely don't drink enough. So keep that hydration going. And also just, you know, when you're talking a lot, you need this. <clears throat> Lone Wolf, any experience with Taobao reps? No, and um, I never will. The only time that I would ever buy a Taobao rep is so that I could do, like for example, if I bought a, a rep of the Alpine jacket, which is lost in the black abyss down there somewhere, I would consider buying a rep of that for the purposes of a video so I could then like try and educate people on what like the difference between a fake one and a real one to help people uh, decide whether they're getting a genuine product or not because I know with the Alpine jacket specifically that can be a little bit of an issue um, That's the only reason I would do it from any other perspective. I would absolutely not consider buying reps um, I think it's kind of shitty to be honest um, You know like I, 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 I kind of get it as well like people have that the same argument that they have with piracy and stuff and it's like oh well, you know it only costs like 50 pounds to make this jacket or ever but there's so much else that goes into it that isn't just the cost of the material. You know, you've got the paying product designers. You've got all the different versions of that jacket that never went into production. You've got uh, marketing. You've got branding. You've got distribution. You've got all of these different elements that factor into that final price. And yeah, to then like not buy the genuine product... Um, it's kind of a bit of a shame. And like, if, if everyone just bought reps of everything, then you'd end up not having any actual designers willing to kind of legitimately push things forward, make new designs, etc. 
Um, and to be honest, you're just not going to get a good quality product if you're buying reps. Um, and it, it can be super up and down, you know, like, you know, you might get a decent quality rep one day, you buy something the next day and it's just awful and it falls apart. So yeah, I, I would not personally um, buy any rep stuff. Uh, have I seen, yeah, reps equals fakes equals corny. Yeah, I would agree with that. I don't know why I kept saying reps. I, people like to say rep to make them sound uh, less bad, I guess. But yeah, they are fake goods. You're buying fake goods. Um, and then you're in the same tier of people that like rock up to the airport with their fake Louis Vuitton handbag, which is basic AF. Don't do that shit. Apparently, um, I saw in the casual video, up to 99% of Louis Vuitton bags are fake. That is mad. Um, but yeah, be one of the 1%. Be the 1% buying the real Louis Vuitton bag, not the fake one. Or just buy, like, there are better bags out there or bags that are just as good that are not as expensive as Louis Vuitton. So just buy a real bag from someone else. You'll still get something good. Um, have I seen the Salomon and Wanda collab? I have not. Let's have a look, though, uh, if I can spell Salomon correctly. Because I've kind of been in the market recently for... Oh, yeah, this this is three days ago. This is some new shit. Thank you, Ian, putting us on... Oh, no, not Ian. Uh, MGMB man, putting us on some new shit right here. Um, is it just this one model here? Yeah, I think so. The Salomon Outpath GTX. So, clearly a performance-orientated shoe. GTX technology in there. Um, so, going to have high levels of water resistance. I am not a massive fan of the colouring, nor am I a massive fan of the silhouette. I think there are definitely better Salomon shoes out there, um, which is kind of a shame because I think Anna Wonder is a very cool brand. I think Salomon shoes are pretty cool as well. So I feel like, yeah, this is not to my taste personally. I think there could have been something more appropriate for me. Uh, yeah, um, but they're definitely going to be a high performance product. So if you like the look of them and your use case uh, necessitates buying something like this where you do actually need some water resistance in a shoe, then yeah, why not? Uh, I was going to bring up another link of some kind, but now I've lost my train of thought. Something around this. Oh yeah, so there was a cool pair of... Uh, is it like Speed Cross 4? There's one that are like black and then they've got like a little cool strip of color no they're not speed cross fours i can't remember the model but there's oh yeah maybe it's these no it's not those they look like that mm, yeah they're this kind of thing not quite the same but they're like a black colorway and they've got like a multicolored bit um shall i bring up a bigger picture of that that would be helpful no i can't do that okay but yeah they're they're all black they've got like a little colorful strip and they look pretty cool and i like them um, so yeah, that's that's definitely a thing. That's what I would want to go for. I would also, oh, I'm just realizing I'm on AliExpress, I was probably about to click on some fake ones. Anyway, um, yeah, I am keeping an eye out for BBS release this season because I would definitely want to uh, pick up some of that stuff. Um, yeah, because it's good. But yeah, I agree, Tabom. I'm a big fan of the casual. I don't actually watch very many uh, like fashion-based YouTube videos, but The Casual is one of the few channels that I have actually watched quite a few videos from. Um, Reggie is a super cool guy as well. He's done a couple of techwear-related videos that are definitely worth a watch. He's one of the few people that will do a video about techwear and actually kind of get it right. A lot of people will do that like introduction to techwear and they'll just be like, yo, techwear is like super dope and it's like about being a ninja and stuff. Like, look at this ninja outfit and it'll be like, you know, the, the standard acronym or whatever. But Reggie, I think, gets the, the subtlety and the performance aspect of that. And he, uh, in general, he's very articulate, very articulate when he communicates things um, and he just, he does a good job. So yeah, shout out my man, Reggie at the casual. Uh, oh, I've just spilled water everywhere. We'll we'll do that later. Don't worry about that. Um, how are my utility vapor maxes? The the sole of them is fine actually. The sole's really good. They have like compressed a little bit, so the bubbles at the back kind of bulge out a little bit. Uh, XT6 soft ground might be the one. Yes, XT6 soft ground. Yes, these were the ones. Yes. 
Good call. Yeah, I thought that these were very cool. And they have a couple of fun colorways. There's a white one as well. Um, there was someone that I saw on Instagram, like, semi put me onto these. Uh, I think uh, Zoe.me, I think, was her name. Um, but yeah, she had a pair of them, and they look super cool. So, that was a thing. Um, there was someone else that asked an interesting question that I was going to answer. Oh yeah, Ricardo, I think you've asked this a couple of times, actually, because I feel like I've seen it pop up. Uh, Neiman or Neman and Kith Collab? I don't know. Let's have a look. I don't think I've seen this stuff before. But I like uh, Neiman as a brand, or Neman. So, is this going to bring up stuff? Is this going to be still in stock? No. Okay. Uh, is Images going to bring this stuff up? No. Is it actually a Neman Kith collab? Am I being silly? Um, yeah, I'm. I'm not finding it to be honest. But I do think that Neiman stuff is super cool, and um, there was something that I've been like on the fence about buying for a very long time. Um, but I'm, I'm probably not gonna buy it just purely because I have too many jackets. Uh, but it's not here. Where is it? sales section uh if we scroll down here because yeah the the downside to neiman is that it's very very expensive retail but they do some cool things that no one else really does so you'll definitely get a cool unique product but yeah this right here guard jacket in let's view this full screen please yeah um the purple version this is exclusive to matches fashion so you might not have seen this one before but yeah i think that this is sick honestly i think it's really cool i think the color is really interesting um i think it does a good job of having that obviously technical aesthetic wearing it with some salomon shoes as well so there you go there's uh there's proof that it works um and yeah i just i like this little arm guard thing that is removable though if you think that's a bit too over the top um but yeah, I just think that that's good. It's on sale now as well, which is nice because yeah, five seventy that's a lot. Three nine nine is is definitely more sensible, and they have like reflective versions as well. So this one sadly more expensive, um, but yeah, I think the the kind of natural color of this is super nice, um, and it's reflective as well. So you can do the cool like Instagram cool thing where you put the flash on and then you look really bright or whatever. Um, but yeah. Boom. I actually emailed them a while back and I was like, because what I wanted to do was I wanted um, I wanted to know if they did like press samples because I would definitely like review something like this just to like send it back afterwards just because I think it would be an interesting thing to look at on the channel. Um, sadly, not something they do at all. Um, but they did actually respond, which was cool. Um, but yeah, one day I definitely will pick up something from these guys because I think uh, particularly with like dyeing techniques as well, like you can see a lot of the products have this kind of like acid dye kind of ombre um, slight look to them, which is pretty cool. So yeah, a brand that I'm a fan of for sure. Um, is it posing to wear tech wear shoes and regular clothes? Says Febreze. Hmm. That's kind of a difficult one. I think to an extent, yes. Um, but that's the same as anything really in the whenever you're wearing a pair of shoes, you know, integrate it with the rest of your outfit, wear it with other things that are going to look appropriate. So if you're wearing like, uh, I don't know, a pair of acronym prestos with some dad fit jeans or whatever, is that going to look appropriate or is that going to bring out the best in your jeans or your prestos? Probably not. But, uh, you know, if you wear them with a nice pair of cargos or um, some cool like all weather pants or something like that, that's going to look a lot better. It doesn't necessarily have to be like a full tech wear outfit. Um, you know, I'm sure like from a more athleisure perspective, things could certainly work. Like those acronym Vapor Maxes, for example, you could definitely wear those in like a really slim, like cool athleisure looking outfit. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's the same with anything really. Um, just pair things up in a way that makes sense and that works. Like the, the cardinal sin that people love to do is they buy those massive Balenciaga triple S trainers to try and flex them on Instagram and they will wear them with like spray on skinny jeans and they look absolutely dreadful. Don't do that. It makes it look like you've got size a thousand feet, like absolutely stomping around. It's it's not good. Like wear some wider jeans, please. Like I know you want to show off that you spend 600 quid on your trainers, but like, yeah, just, just take it easy. Just wear things that give you some breathing room in there. Alex says, 
Is it harder? Oh, where's the comment gone? There we go. Uh, is it harder to get product for free from techwear brands? I feel like every influencer can get their hands on free Balenciagas, but rarely do techwear people get equivalently priced gifts. Um, I think it's more a case of there's not. Well, a there's not very many people that specifically look at techwear stuff or technical products, and there's not that many brands that do it, to be honest. So. Um, I, I try and do my best to kind of like work with the various brands that I show off on this channel. So I've not had too much difficulty in that there's been some brands that have actually been incredibly supportive. Um, Riot Division were probably the first, like when I was, you know, had like a thousand subscribers or something like that. I think they were probably one of the first brands that reached out to me and were happy to support um, the channel basically. Um, but since then, like, Gorilla Group have been really supportive. On Fon Leve have been really supportive. Um, there's been a couple of other brands as well. Outlier have been super supportive. And all of those are brands that I like a lot. So I'm extremely grateful for that, to be honest. Um, and it also means from you guys' perspective, it means that I can do a lot more interesting stuff than ordinarily I would be able to. But I try and approach things from that angle. Like, my interest is not trying to get as many free clothes as possible. And to be honest, people email me a lot. Well, not a lot, but... Most of the times people email me, it's about things that I'm not, I don't think will be 100% relevant to the channel. So I say no and I reject it. So there's been quite a few things I've kind of missed out on or I've not ended up getting for free um, on that basis. But I would rather stay true to what I'm actually interested in and what I think will make the interesting content rather than like, oh yeah, sure, I can work that into a video. Why not? And I just like accept a bunch of stuff. Like I, I never really want to do that. Um, what else? Didn't new shoes recently? Oh, uh, Ma I can't really pronounce your name. Malich. Didn't 11 BBS by Salomon, or X Salomon, collab Salomon, uh, release new shoes recently for SS20? I don't know. I hope not, or else I've not been paying attention and I've missed it. But I wanted to pick something from them up, like on a recent release. So, yeah, maybe I have to uh, have a look back through that. Um, uh, someone mentioned a cold wall earlier. I can't remember where that was. Um, and yes, uh, I do like a cold wall and I can prove it because sitting back here, this is something you guys get a sneak peek for, uh, for being on the live stream. Um, so I bought these recently, which are a little bit of a weird thing. These are the a cold wall shard trainers. So I'm looking forward to you guys roasting me for, for these in the comments because they're a little bit weird. I get that. They're a bit strange. But I think they're very cool. They're quite a smart take on this kind of deconstructed industrial kind of style. Um, and they look quite smart as well, which I like. They also have a reflective inside as well, which is super cool. Um, but I want to cover that in some more detail. So that will be... Um, that will be a future proper video. But yeah, I think a Cold Wall are a very cool brand. Um, and I'm getting into them more. There you go. Stay there. I'm getting into them more recently, for sure. Um, and there's been, yeah, there's been quite a few things that I have wanted to pick up from them. A lot of their stuff, unfortunately, is very expensive, which is the downside. But yeah, um, I, I think, yeah, I think there's a lot of stuff that's that's worth pursuing within that. It's kind of a bit of a different take on technical performance gear compared to a lot of the other brands out there, which I also like. Um, and I'm, I want to do some more content around a cold wall for sure um so there's potential actually for doing something around like some unreleased pieces some samples and that kind of thing not on an official basis on an unofficial one and um, so yeah keep a lookout for that at some point um and yeah we might be able to to be able to check out like a bunch of cool and interesting a cold wall things but yeah they're they're definitely a brand that's on my radar for sure so that was a, a good a good question slash suggestion from I think there were a couple of guys actually who mentioned that. Oh, thank you, thank you, Jackie, for your nice comment. Been following you since the forever. Just wanted to say it's so exciting to see how you've been evolving and in turn making me evolve. Best of luck in your future endeavors. That is very nice. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, I I do my best to kind of update. Oh no, I hope that's still live. I just pressed the back button on my keyboard by accident, so I hope that hasn't messed anything up. Can I go back into this? You can tell I haven't done this live stuff before. Uh, is this fine? Yeah, I think it's okay. Okay, I don't think that ever actually stopped. Okay, that's fine. Ignore any of that. 
Uh, and I also totally lost my train of thought again. Um, oh yeah, it was about updates to the channel and stuff. Yeah, I try and do my best to keep like evolving things like you'll see, you know, I buy new hardware like the cameras and stuff because I want to make this channel the best that it can be. And I want to improve my own knowledge as well. I want to improve the kinds of things that I can cover. You know, I, I started off not being able to do that much, frankly. Um, but now, you know, I cover more interesting things, more high-end, more premium things, as well as the odd kind of budget side of things as well. So yeah, uh, what about the one shoe wrapped in a garbage bag? Uh, <laughs> Paper bag says, yeah, what, what about the one shoe wrapped in a garbage bag? There's been a lot of shoes that have been wrapped in garbage bags. So recently there's been the Vapormax ones, which came in that like all weather thing. And there's the Mars Yards as well, which were similar. I mean, they're both a bit weird to be honest. Mars Yards are kind of cool though. Um, I think because they are like so ugly, it makes them a bit adorable. So I think that's got that going for them. Uh, YT says, what do I think about Corbin? Um, he seems like a pretty cool guy um, from my fairly limited interaction with him. Um, yeah, he, he seems nice enough. I don't have a bad thing to say about him, to be honest. Um, he focuses more on the kind of budget side of things, uh, which is definitely a good thing. So, yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, Yolamite says, gonna grab Akron and Presto, is not sure what size. So if you normally wear, I don't know what those sizes equate to. So Akron and Presto's fit a little bit big, but in UK sizes at least, they only do full sizes. So I normally wear an 11, so I bought them in an 11 and they're a little bit on the big side, but if I went down to a 10, then they would almost certainly be too small. So if you're like a 10 and a half, then I would definitely go down to the 10 rather than up to an 11. But if your true size is like a full size, then you might just have to get that and just deal with them being a little bit big, basically, as I do. So uh, Slack says 11 by BBS SS20 should be in January. Okay, that's cool. I'll, I'll keep a lookout for January then. That gives me some time to get my money up. Um, because if there is something cool from Acronym this season, I am going to have to end up picking it up. Because I am a little bit sad that I returned those P30s. <laughs> Incountable said about the uh, the shards, the shoes here. It looks like someone it looks like someone wore them and stepped in some more shoes. Yeah, I kind of agree with that actually. These bits are supposed to represent shards of glass apparently, um, but they're just leather panels. I assume it's real leather. Certainly hope it is. It's kind of hard to tell, to be honest. Like, fake leather is so good. Like, most Nike shoes don't use real leather. They use fake leather, and most people don't know that. Uh, yeah, Corbin does a lot of DIY stuff as well, um, says Austin. Yes, that is true. Um, I would love to do more DIY things, but my own uh, DIY skills are sadly not that great. So, uh, yeah, I think it would be a bit of an embarrassment, to be honest, uh, if I did that. Um, I've just noticed, actually, the the time. Um, this actually, I'm, I'm really glad that this is, that there's been so many of you guys who have been, like, willing to, to come and check stuff out. Um, but I didn't intend to go on for too much longer than, like, an hour and a half. So, um, yeah, I'll kind of, like, round things out. We'll do, you know, another couple of questions or whatever. Uh, but, yeah, we never got around to doing the... Uh, to actually looking at the outfits because we were just focused so much on this stuff. Um, was there anything, I can't remember if there was anything like really, really important that I wanted to mention that I didn't in terms of tech when using. things. I think we went over quite a few of the bits actually. We talked about the Gorilla Group sale. We talked about the um, Aoki stuff. A couple of other cool releases as well. Um, so yeah, I think in future I would definitely do like a little bit of a longer stream. Um, yeah. Uh, thoughts on the self-lacing Hirachi? Oh yeah, that was another one actually. I have the link for that right here. So, uh, where are they? Oh, maybe I didn't put the link anywhere. Um, yeah, the self-lacing Hirachis, I think they look a bit nicer. Um, what are they called? Like Adapt Hirachi. Something like this. Yeah, these are the ones. So these look a little bit nicer. Go away. Uh, than the previous hyper adapt shoes 
they have like a much cooler, more wearable, futuristic look to them. They're not those. That's a different shoe, I think. Oh no, is that the same? Yeah. Um, yeah, they're pretty weird though. I get that a lot of people are not going to like these. I like them more than the previous self-lacing things, but yeah, I don't think they're amazing, to be honest. Um, this colorway definitely looks better, actually. These ones are going to be a lot more wearable. But yeah, I don't think they've quite nailed it yet with having like a really good looking shoe that people are actually going to be interested in and want to buy whilst also having that technology. But I think this is probably the closest we've come yet, in my opinion. Some people really like the old hybrid apps, but yeah, I'm, I'm not, I was not a massive fan of those, uh, but I like those a little bit more. Um... Free acronym Nike shoes from worst to best. I can't even remember what they all are. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't want to like, I don't want to trash talk any of them to be honest, because I think they're all good in their own way. I think probably I would put the acronym Vape Max at the bottom, purely because the uh, they're just not as wearable. I find it quite difficult to like integrate them in a nice way into outfits but i think they look very cool like by themselves it's just yeah in an outfit not so great um then what have you got above that uh maybe the lunar force ones one level above that because you know on the downside they're not that super different to a regular air force one however i think that's actually a really good thing as well because it makes them super wearable so if i was going to pick up uh, a pair of acronym shoes now those are probably the ones that i would go for um but yeah take that with a pinch of salt i guess um and then the downtown air force ones i think really cool looking shoe really interesting they've done a great job of taking a nike product and then putting acronym dna in there making it like super awesome and different so that's great and uh what else is there prestos um yeah i do I put Prestos at the top? Prestos are like the most overrated, I think, of all of them. But at the same time, they look really nice. They work really well with TechQuest stuff. Again, it's got like that bit of acronym DNA in there mixed with the Nike stuff. So I think there's a lot to like about those. And you've got both the very neutral, very understated colorways. And you've got the crazy ones as well. So that's, that's my rating, I guess. And with that... Um, I think it's it's time to call it. So I've got to say thank you so much to everyone who's tuned in and uh, and given all their questions and just been in here chatting and that kind of thing. I'm sorry I wasn't able to answer like everything, um, just because there's 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 like 200 of you in the chat, which is mad. Um, but yeah, thank you for all showing up. Um, I would definitely like to do this again. So please let me know in the comments if you enjoyed it. Um, or hit the little like button, I suppose. It looks like there's a like button attached to this. I don't see the same thing that you see. My little panel thing is different. So yeah, if you enjoyed it, uh, let me know. And I will definitely aim to do more of these. Um, and of course, there's going to be like your standard YouTube content as well. So next week is going to be a video about the uh, field boot, the Nike SFB Field 2 boot, um, which popped up on an Instagram picture a little while ago. Um, or like couple of weeks ago something like that um but yeah that's everything um so thank you so much to everyone bong hollywood austin accountable patrickson callum Ilya, biam max things happen ryan slack tyson paper bag yabon tabon rather sorry um yeah everyone there in the chat der hayes thank you so much and uh yeah we will see you very soon in the next one i'm gonna hit that end stream button now boom Oh, I have to press enter.